back. Does any member wish to seek, does any member seek recognition? Ah, Mr. Bowman, you're recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I would like to strike the last word. You're recognized for five minutes. I would like to speak in opposition uh, to this amendment for several reasons. Uh, number one, uh, since New York City has been mentioned multiple times and since my background is as an educator in New York City schools, I just want to highlight for everyone in the audience and my colleagues across the aisle that New York City is what we consider a Title I district. It's a school system that cannot survive without the Title I funds that come from the federal government. The reason why the federal government had to step in, I believe, in 1965 to provide Title I resources to uh, lower income uh, communities is because of redlining that was allowed by the federal government uh, in past legislation, which led to the underfunding, the chronic underfunding of schools simply based on race. If you were black or Latino in a particular community, your schools were underfunded, while schools in white suburban communities that had access to federal funds to buy housing, those schools received additional funding. So now this amendment seeks to double down on prior racist policy by implementing present day racist policies in targeting of Title I school districts. I also want to take exception to the term invasion as we describe uh, what's happening here with immigrants, migrants coming to our country seeking asylum. There's a long history of that word invasion being used to describe migrants, particularly from Latino countries coming into our country by white supremacists in their fear mongering around the arrival of immigrants in our country. So I take incredible exception to that word invasion. We are not being invaded. People are coming here to seek asylum, as is the history of the United States. Much of this anti-immigrant rhetoric and policy is aligned to something called the Great Replacement Theory, which was condemned by this Congress in last Congress, and I am proud to be the author of that resolution. The Great Replacement Theory states that the white race is under attack by blacks, Jews, and immigrants, and we must do something about it. And many of the mass shooters in our country have identified the Great Replacement Theory as being the motivating factor to their mass shooting, including the Buffalo mass shooting, mass shooting in upstate New York. So the hateful, divisive rhetoric is in the resolution. The hateful, divisive rhetoric is a part of one of the amendments. The hateful, divisive rhetoric is historical as per redlining, and the anti-immigrant sentiment is directly connected to the Great Replacement Theory. Now, I know none of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle will admit to being racist, and I don't think they are. But when you look at the rhetoric, and you hear the talking points and look at the leg legislation that's put forward, what are we to say? The gentleman will suspend. I want to remind the gentleman that you cannot engage in characterizing uh, the other members' positions or, or calling their um, position, or in, engaging in personality characterizations. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's just very frustrating because it seems like the legislation itself engages in personalities when it refers to a group of people that is derogatory. So if the legislation is doing it, and we're using words on the other side of the aisle like invasion, as if it's an army coming to our country, is that not personalities? Thank you, and I yield back. The gentleman yields back.